Welcome back. You're still watching S8 today. Now, if you've been watching the channel throughout the course of the day, you'd have noticed that we've been paying special attention and focusing on climate change, particularly if you remember what we saw in terms of those typhoons and the floods in KwaZulu-Natal recently. Well, for more on this conversation, we're now joined by environmental scientist Simon Gear, who you might remember actually as one of our weather presenters not yeah. too long ago. Well, I was just thinking I made my debut <laughs> in the studio and you had 20 a lot years more ago. Hair, yeah. I had a, a lot more of some <laughs> things and a lot less of others. Yeah. All right, so climate change. I mean, you know, we, we talk about it and it's almost become a conversation or a word that we use, but I'm not sure that we quite understand what it is and what kind of impact it has on a society like South Africa. I heard the other day that Southern Africa is particularly vulnerable to the effects of climate change. So take us through that. Why should we be paying attention and what, does it, what effect does it have on, on society in South Africa? It's almost worth thinking about it as an instability within, um, w within the environment, but therefore within our society as well. So uh, as we're moving more and more into this climate change future, when I first started on television, yeah. we used to talk, talk about climate change that was something that was coming down the line. It wasn't here yet. Mm. We now talk about it as something that's here. We are living in a, a changed climate environment. And, a, you know, and that is getting progressively more unusual. Um, and what that means is that, firstly, our ability to forecast, particularly at a seasonal level, is deteriorating. So that uh, really serious drought that was in Cape Town uh, two years ago yeah. now, that wasn't really forecast by the Weather Service because their forecast confidence is now uh, evaporated at that, that, that seasonal level. So it's harder to plan from a season to a season if you're a farmer or if you're a government. There's also the droughts seem to be getting worse, the storms seem to be getting worse, there's greater variability in our system, which means all of this just creates in instability through the agricultural uh, economy. And that means that ultimately um, you get inflated uh, food prices and with high food prices you start getting social instability. Right. So I always say to people, we're never gonna get to a stage, or hopefully not, where you know it's too hot to live. Um, what we are going to do is get to a stage where our societies are so undermined, where people feel so food insecure um, and socially insecure that, if, that societies become very, very mm. hard to govern. And so Southern Africa in particular is really, really vulnerable. So climate change for South Africa is going to mean increased immigration from, um, from you know, our, our neighboring, our northern neighbors. Uh, it's going to mean greater concerns around food. Um, probably more xenophobia. Mm. All of those sort of social ills are, are spinning off from the climate change problem. Thanks. Somebody told me the other day that uh, you know we're busy worrying about energy and um, the, the next wars are going to be fought over water. Yeah, I mean, already we're in a situation yeah. where we've got a finite water resource in the, in the country. Um, and we haven't really uh, looked after it very, very mm. well. Um, so most of our municipalities, or at least half of our municipalities in South Africa, you can't drink the water any longer. Uh, and that used to be a real point of pride in South Africa. And that is because we're just pumping so much rubbish back into the, mm. into the rivers. Um, so, so one of the ways you, you combat climate change or you prepare for climate change is by making sure that you're doing the basics right, making sure that your sewage system is working, making sure that your farming is, is as optimal as, a, as it can be. It's those sort of really quite boring, drudgery kind of things that are ultimately going to help us to cope. So is South Africa pulling its weight with this uh, climate change uh, story? We, <coughs> we still are and we aren't in ways. So there's been, there's been massive um, investment in things like solar technology. Um, uh, I happen to work in that sort of world and I just see new solar projects coming in all the time, particularly over the Northern Cape. Um, that said, I think 86% of our energy is still from coal. We're still digging new coal mines mm. uh, all the time. Uh, so we haven't really changed a mindset uh, in terms of the way we produce energy. So all of that is what is our contribution to climate mm. change. And then how we, what are we doing to prepare for it? And certainly the, the, the government talks a really, really good game. The Department of Environmental Affairs constantly has various climate change type things going on. Um, but until I see massive investment in things like our water infrastructure, yeah. and I don't mean big new glamorous dams, fixing the sewage systems, no. I won't really believe that we're, that we're co um, contributing properly. So we have a, an amazing cameraman here called Dallas, and I'm just wondering, what does he need to do? Because he's listening to this conversation, and he's probably wondering, uh, can I actually even do anything? Can I contribute to this climate change fight? Uh, 
you you support things like um, the urban planning that's going to get more people into buses and away from individual cars. Um, you know, so supporting the BRT, supporting mm -hmm. the, the car train, all of those sort of things. Um, you you think about. Uh, about we don't really have energy choices in this country. We can't willingly buy green energy, unfortunately. But you you support local municipalities in efforts to be energy efficient or to be water efficient, all of those sort of things. You support um, ecologists when they are fighting against coal mine companies that want to damage wetlands mm -hmm. and those sort of things. It's about being socially active in in green issues and becoming more and more aware of these issues and supporting the good guy in all mm -hmm. of them. As, a, as an environmentalist, as a, as a weather guy, uh, sometimes pretend sports uh, uh, commentator. <laughs> <laughs> um, Not that pretend. <laughs> <laughs> what are you most worried about when you go about your job every day, mm. especially the environmental consulting, and you see things? What are you most worried about? I'm, I'm worried about ecological collapse. Mm. I, I'm worried that we push a system so far that it can't recover. Um, systems like the Vaal River systems like our fisheries, uh, particularly on the west coast where penguins are now starving to death because they can't get the sardines that they need. Um, so not all of these are necessarily immediate climate change issues, but we push these systems and we push them and we push them and push them and then one day we're going to turn around and realize they're gone mm. um, and we can't, we can't turn them around. That's what worries me. Simon Gert, thanks very much indeed. Always a pleasure having you in studio and uh, let's hope we can have this chance again because I think this is a conversation we need to keep going. And who knows, we might even have you standing here <laughs> telling us the weather again. I wouldn't say that, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> All right, that was Simon Gere, who's an environmental scientist there. And uh, again, we continue to focus on uh, climate change uh, and uh, this is something that we'll be doing throughout the channel throughout, uh, for the rest of the today.